Hey, it's Chris here from Bover Trout Fitters. Today we're gonna tie my version of my Stonefly Nymph, but as a wiggle pattern. And this is two hook nymph. So we're gonna use a size 10 curved nymph barbless and a traditional nymph barbless hook. Both size 10, both from RX, one of my favorite hook styles. We're gonna start with the trailer hook first. This is the size 10 curved hook. I'm using flat wax nylon and black, and I'm just gonna dress the hook, but I am gonna go down well past the curve. You can see that here, and at the end, I'm gonna build a little bit of a ball. This is important. So next we're gonna put on our goose biots, black goose biots for this pattern. However, we actually want them upside down, so to speak, okay? The goose biots are actually curving upwards when we tie it onto the hook here. And I'm trying to get that nice splayed out pattern. So you can see that curve going upwards. We're gonna turn this hook upside down when it actually goes on to the nymph itself. And so then those goose biots will be curving downwards. Now this is very important. I've brought the thread back to the head of the hook, but I'm actually gonna build up some bulk. And flat wax nylon's good for this. You can build up a bit of a taper, and you can see it there. Now I'm gonna take a very small black larva lace. I'm gonna tie this in. It's actually got a flat side and a curved side. I'm putting the curved side down so that when I start wrapping, the curved side's actually up. Now I'm wrapping it up the hook here. Uh, I'm gonna clip off the tip, but here you'll also be able to build up that taper. And we wanna have that because the larva lace is gonna follow that taper as we wrap it. So here we go, concentric wraps all the way up. You can see it looks nice and buggy and it gets thicker as we get to the eye of the hook. We absolutely want that. So I'm gonna lock this part down here nice and tight. And then this is basically gonna finish the nymph. I'm gonna cut off all this. Uh, I'm going to whip finish it tight and put some glue on there just to hold it in place. Now we're gonna switch out and move to the traditional nymph hook. Now the traditional nymph hook is your classic nymph. It's uh, got a flat shank here and it's long enough that it will take a bead. Now we've got a bead on here, but we're not gonna move it to the eye of the hook yet. First thing I'm gonna do is just dress again the front of the hook. I don't need to go very far back, you'll see why. I'm gonna cut that off and now what we're gonna do is tie on two more goose biots. Now because this part of the hook is gonna be oriented normally, we wanna tie these with the curve going downwards as normal. Uh, this is how I like to tie my other stonefly lymph, which uses one hook. And you guys can check out that video. There'll be a link at the very end here. Now I've pushed the bead over the thread wraps, gone under it, and now I'm gonna wrap to the back of the shank. And again, I'm going down the curve. That is very important, okay? We wanna have that. I've built up a little bit of a ball at the end there. Now we're gonna do is tie in some braided line. This is 30 pound braid. This is what's gonna attach the trailer hook to this hook. I am leaving a little bit of extra distance so that I can put it back along the hook and then tie it down as you can see there. And that really means that it's never going to, to give. It's gonna stay there nice and tight. Now I'm gonna thread the trailer hook onto that braid and get it nice and tight. And you can see now here how it orients onto the back of the nymph. This is what's gonna give us that articulated wiggle action. I wanna tie it so it's got some movement, but I don't want it to be too sloppy. There you go. We're gonna lock that power braid down. And again, I'm gonna leave a little bit extra, clip it off and then tie it going backwards and that's gonna secure it in place. Now we're gonna put on thin skin. I really like this material for shell backs. It's a nice, easy to work with rubber. Make sure that it does go right down the center of the hook. I'm gonna tie that in facing backwards, and now I'm gonna put on my chenille. And again, this is one of my favorite materials, a variegated chenille for tying my other stonefly nymphs. So I'm trying it now here with this wiggle pattern. We're gonna lock that down by the tip, and then we're gonna move our thread to about halfway up the hook, maybe just a bit beyond halfway. So I'm gonna wrap up this chenille. I'm gonna lock this down here right in the middle and now we're gonna tie on our legs, okay? So this is just classic sexy floss. This isn't a black and cream kind of color. It matches the color very well with this particular color variety. But you know, I often tie these in olive or golden stone patterns as well. I've locked those down. Now I'm going to finish wrapping up my chenille and just make sure that I'm spacing it in between the legs so that they still splay out nicely. I'm gonna tie that down as well. And then for our last step, I'm gonna pull that skin, thin skin forward. This creates that nice buggy shell back. Nice and tight, I'm gonna lock it down uh, right behind the bead just with a couple tight wraps. And then I'm gonna fold it back again along itself going backwards and I'm gonna lock it down again. You can see my thread wrapping just over the fold there. Now that I've done that, I can finish this fly by whip finishing it. Again, we're gonna glue that in place. And now I'm gonna take my scissors. I'm gonna cut that thin skin fold that's facing backwards. I'm gonna cut triangles out of it. Basically make it like a chevron. This is gonna give us our wings. And again, that'll become apparent when you see me rotate the fly here. So I'm just gonna clean that up and make sure it's gonna work well. 
These two size 10 hooks seem to give us a very realistic profile for Stonefly Nymph. Not too big, not too small. Here in the Bow River, I find that this sort of black and gray pattern works really well. And I do like using it with a coffee colored bead, as you can see there. There you can see how I've cut that wing case in sort of a chevron pattern. You can see the legs there, which I'm gonna trim right now. I did use a tungsten bead for this fly. I do like my nymphs to get down a little bit deeper. But when this gets into the current, that tail should give us a little bit of lifelike movement movement. As well, I've got two barbless hooks on here. So, you know, if I get a short strike or something, that should help as well. You can get all these materials that we have at bowrivertroutfitters.com. Thanks so much for joining us and please check out that other nymph pattern. We'll see you guys soon.